patriotism. He's undaunted and he is sagacious. Please welcome the Honorable Minister of State, Petroleum Resources of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for his address. Welcome, Dr. Emmanuel Ibe Kachuku. Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, ably represented by the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Engineer Boss Mustafa. Uh, permit me all to stand on the protocol paraphernalia that's been set by Dr. Makanti Baru. She was exhaustive enough. Uh, I don't want to go through that. So I'm just going to stand by that. Um, I, I thank my um, brother ministers who are here present. Sadly, thank His Excellency, the Secretary General of uh, um, OPEC, GCF, IEA, and Apple, who have found time out of their busy schedules to come here today. I also thank my brother ministers from other African countries who are either here in person or represented by their own delegates. I am absolutely delighted that you are here today. I, I was at OTC last year um, for what might have been my fourth attendance at OTC uh, in my 30 year span in the oil industry. And there I pledge that the um, attendance of Nigerians to OTC had become an international jamboree. We have an average of four to 500 uh, Nigerians attending OTCs every year. Huge amounts of foreign investment, of uh, foreign exchange spent. And quite frankly, with uh, every due respect, only very only a small percentage of those who attended OTC spent time really in OTC business. And it had become more an, uh, an export of cultural tourism uh, for the US, uh, import of cultural tourism for the US, than in, and an export of foreign exchange from Nigeria. So last year, I declared that that was going to be my last OTC attendance as minister. Um, no time in the hands of my successors, of course. Uh, but I also declare that no government fund will be used to sponsor uh, people uh, to OTC anymore. Um, but at any Nigerian who wanted to attend the OTC and could afford it, uh, should feel free to pay the bill. Yeah. And that there was a need for us to uh, set up the equivalent of an OTC here in Africa, not only to energize the oil sector, but also to uh, help us bring together our African brothers and sisters uh, who are looking to us for leadership in this sector. Uh, we're the largest uh, oil producing country in Africa, uh, probably the largest gas producing country in Africa. Uh, we have been in this business for nearly 50 years. And, and we have had our ups and downs, and they certainly needed to learn from our own ups and downs. And I felt that there was no better way to do it than to bring the investors here to Nigeria. The difficulty about attracting investments when you attend OTC is that you end up being the investor visiting. Um, everybody attends and everybody tells you what you can do. And there was a need for them to come here uh, and visit us and see what potentials lie in this country for investment, and not just in this country, but in Africa. Uh, this is the very first edition, so I apologize if there are any limitations, but I'm very encouraged by the moment of attendance of uh, all the dignitaries in this sector uh, during, this, uh, during this conference. The next four days will be very engaging, very intellectually refreshing, uh, but also uh, very snapshotish of some of the things that we can achieve uh, as a continent. The reality is that the global world of oil is changing, and I wouldn't cover that space too much before the Secretary General of OPEC speaks. But the reality is that today, if you cannot produce cheap cost oil, if you cannot diversify the processing of your oil, if you cannot look to, quite frankly, internalizing and externalizing the investments in the sector, so your people are as important as your foreign investors, if you cannot capture the next requisite technology skills, uh, that are essential to help you operate efficiently, you are lost before you start. In another 10 to 15 years, export of crude oil as we know it uh, will be a shameful um, harbinger for any country that is doing it. And if you look at the movement in the Gulf, if you look at the United States that had exited, quite frankly, production of oil, everybody is coming at it from a different angle. Shale in the US, diversification in the, in the Gulf, and so much more is going on. And in clean energy focus is beginning to make almost irrelevant the vast reserves of crude oil that you have in the ground, unless you can turn them into things that are clean. So the challenge for oil companies who are operating here and the challenge for Nigerians who are in this sector has changed. And historically, our business was to find the oil, sell it, put foreign exchange in the hands of FAC, and move on. It's got to be better than that now. Our oil has got to provide work for our people. 
Oil has got to provide the resource to power this country. Oil has got to provide the operational environment that is transparent enough for others to take Nigeria serious. Oil has got to provide the technical and human skills, skill set that is essential for us to export people out into other African countries and to become major investors in other African countries, something the banking sector has tried to do successfully over the last uh, six to seven years. So there is a lot of challenge in this, and I thought that the uh, OTC equivalent here will begin that process of re-engaging. I expect that future OTCs will have, quite frankly, a research room which shows the latest technologies. Uh, last week I was um, at, um, at a dinner, so I was um, at a dinner while I'm in Lagos to open up to tell the Gina FPSO. And, and I was, quite frankly, amazed by, by the sheer exploratory grounds that that project has set. For the first time, close to 30-40% of an FPSO was put together in Nigeria, exported to go tie-in, and here the FPS, FPS is lying in Lagos, accepting tie-in. And so when I hear the, secretary, when I hear the uh, executive secretary of uh, uh, NCDMB say that uh, it will must have add-on and additive effects for the future projects, I can well understand that. My target is that over the next 10 years, Nigeria will develop an FPSO here locally. And that's not too much to ask. self-sufficient in its own power provision and that over the same period uh, we begin to mutate away from um, crude oil as it were to very refined clean uh, provision of fossils my target is that over that same period if investment in the sector will be such that Nigerian companies and Nigerian entities and Nigerian shareholders will begin to move from a minuscular 10 percent today Niger Delta militancy issue not not always final but at least we've moved it from a point where we are an all-time production of one million barrels today to near full recovery of our barrels. To so find a way of engagement that respects the community, focuses on their need and takes them serious, not just as agitators, but indeed as partners in the process of, a of um, um, the exploration of uh, crude and natural resource. A lot more engagements to take place, a lot more work to be done. And I'm giving as much time together with my colleague, Niger Delta, in, in the engagement aspects of it, in the development aspect of it, as we also give into oil exploration. If we continue this and can focus on home communities, we can find the peace that are essential ultimately to be able to operate in this country without difficulties. We've addressed refineries, it may not be very, it may not be very obvious, but for the first time, we're creating a model where private investment is going into our dilapidated refineries. Uh, some of those will be announced over the next one, one month. And we're still targeting to be able to get these refineries up, up and running from the about 14% um, um, utilization capacity today, to about 90 to 95% over the next 18 to 20 months. If we do that, hopefully we'll begin to move very drastically to self-sufficiency in production of refined petroleum products. We see queues, and I must thank NMPC most substantially, uh, because on Tuesday or Wednesday last week, I gave them a marching order that whatever I took, I didn't want my visitors coming into Abuja to see queues. When I came back this weekend, I was very, very happy to see that a lot of work had been done. So let's give them a round of applause. There are other areas that we've looked at um, um, that we've made a lot of certain area of legislation and regulation. We've been able to bring out the gas policy. We've been able to bring out the petroleum policy. Uh, we've submitted the fiscal policy to the Federal Executive Council. We've held that back to never lost half a sort of come. Um, a conference and discussion that are essential to fine tune and make sure everybody's on board. Um, we, we, the assembly itself has done its human job of passing the PIGB, waiting for the executive tour. So, a lot has happened over a period of two years, even in the legislative and policy area. We started the early renewal of leases way before time. We're moving at it as rapidly as we can. We're looking at potentially going into marginal fields releases. So, everything that needs to be tackled here has been. But the, one of the biggest things that we have done is open up this sector so that people can see it. Today, an MPC publishes his reports. The Petroleum Ministry is as active uh, in the web as any other, any other, any, any other ministry. Uh, and, and more important, some of the fundamental changes that have happened in MPC have changed the, the scope from just being a parastatal of size to a parastatal of efficiency. So people are focused on core businesses. People are focused on being able to compete. Those models will continue to get worked, and I, I thank Dr. McCarthy Mac for continuing that whole philosophy. Uh, but we're going to continue to work. It, it's, it's a long road to freedom. Uh, but that road, we're going to take the first uh, innovative steps that will enable us free up this sector and make it productive. 
And so as I, as I welcome all of you today, I ask everybody to look at the potential challenges that we face. Africa is probably the continent with the least supply of power. And until power is available, this country, this continent cannot move. Nigeria, obviously, with its 180 million people and growing at a very rapid rate, is critically in need of power. That power won't have unless, unless gas projects become incentivized and happen and happen rapidly. Now, what's stopping us from that? Africa is the only one where we still import most of our petroleum products from abroad, whereas we have refineries and we have the crude. Just, just a non-starter. Why? What is stopping us from that? Africa is still the only ones where there are question marks in terms of whatever activities we have in the oil sector, whether we're doing the very best that we can. What's stopping us from improving? Africa is still the only area where with vast amounts of resources, the owners of this resource all over the nation and all over African countries continue to cry for neglect and abandonment. There are so much challenges and sometimes you ask yourself, what is holding Africa back? What, what is it about Africa? that prevents it from taking the bold steps that is essential for it to move, you know, and actually win the liberation that it, it's essential to make it a continent of, a continent of, a continent of um, envy. But, but let me give you the, the silver lining. The silver lining is that as most developed countries are reaching basically the peak of their development, Africa today, with its bushes and wildlives and resources, remains a continent yet on top abundant potentials, potential possibilities unlimited. If we do the right things at the right time, with the right energy, with the right opportunities, Africa can begin to move. I am hoping that this summit will be the very beginning of that movement. I thank you very much.